Hello and welcome to another Not Chilly podcast. Today, Josh and I talk about South Park as a whole in kind of lead up to a series that we want to do, which is where we just kind of randomly talk about episodes that we really love and we break them down, uh, which should be kind of smaller nugget episodes rather than the hour and a half that you normally get, but we'll see how we go when we start recording them. So yes, if you guys have any episode suggestions or anything of the sort, feel free to email me at uh, the link that I'll post underneath in the description. And I hope you enjoy. Thanks very much for being a part of this. God, you have the better microphone. The only reason why I'm using this not microphone is because it's newer. And then as soon as I hear your voice, I'm like, oh. It's just my voice. It's got nothing to do with the microphone. Sure it doesn't. How you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. How about you? Right on. Yeah. You doing okay? All right, all right, all right. Yeah, you just... Well, you're not even listening to your own voice. So. <laughs> uh, Yeah, so, what are we talking about? What's well... Happening? What's happening? What's happening? I had a recent... Um, I've been fighting this game for 38 hours of playing. So, the game's been really consuming, but not for the right reasons. It's... Like, I, I've been enjoying it, but I just want to finish it because there were so many other things I want to play and I didn't want to divert myself to another game and then come back to it and then do that. I just wanted to get it done and finish it. And that's South Park Fractured But Whole. The Fractured But Whole. The back Fractured But Whole. Yep. Uh, which One of my favorite titles of anything in the history of everything. I was going to say, it is pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> um, and how that came about is very funny as well. So I think, yeah. I mean, you can tell the story if you want. Like, that, that well, the, the issue is I can't remember what the original name was, but it was. Oh uh, no, that I think it was like an ass crack through time or something, or the the ass crack of time or something, yeah. something like that. And uh, they knew that they were going to split the whole team off of each other and bring them back together. Um, By the way, spoilers. Yeah, I mean, goes without saying. It should. Um, should call this show spoilers goes without saying not jelly spoils shit yeah and uh yeah he was told that he wasn't allowed to call that um because it was just direct so he said how do i say an ass crack that's broken without saying it and he just went ah the fractured but whole and the thing that (laughs) the reason why i love it so much is that like it's a fractured butthole ha 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 but the fact that it actually works for the story, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the story is. It's, yeah, he's a smart guy. I like he it. is, and I don't know, I mean, he must smoke a lot of crack. No. Just, he's just, he's just a weird dude, I reckon. Yeah, weird dude that's, that's pointed in the right direction. Yeah. You would hate for him to be a Trump supporter. <laughs> I think that's part of why they did the uh, hashtag cancel South Park. They've been interviewed a few times about the Trump thing, and he just says, I don't even know what you do with this. Yeah, yeah. No, you did tell me this story. Like, <laughs> it's like he writes himself, and it's not even... Yeah. How, like, what do you make fun of when the world has has just fucked itself? Right? At th- <laughs> that point, it's just sad. Yeah. Isn't it? That's, I think that's where he's at. Yeah. Which I love. That's actually a zone that I quite like Trey Parker in. I think when he gets into that, like... The two times he's gone into that for me have been uh, the the episode of South Park uh, where Stan thinks everything is shit. Um, oh, I, th- I think that was a really good one. It's a really great episode, yeah. and I have a lot of favorite episodes of South Park. There's probably a pool I can get it down to about ten of the ex- extremely amazing episodes yeah uh and yeah one of my other sort of sad or well done episodes is the episode about uh body image and photoshop um i don't don't think i said that one yeah that i think that's that's from the last season before they switched to the uh the season arc narrative uh method Okay. Was so it- South Park was just always this episode, then this episode, and this episode, and sometimes they'd have a two or three episode arc. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, from season, I think it's 20, 21, and now 22, they're full season arcs. Yeah, right. Um, so instead of telling a bunch of different stories, they tell one story overall. For me personally, it's reduced the amount that the show is funny. Yeah, right. Which is fine. But the story is just, like, the narratives are so awesome that mm. 
that's why I have a bit of a problem now. Uh, you know, Star, uh, Star, Star Wars. South Park has always been an Insta acquire for me. It's been, I have to watch it when it comes out. Oh. Uh, and now, yeah, I. it's so good to binge it as a, yeah. like, one big thing. That's what I'm going to get to do. I think last season I saw was probably like 10 or 11 or something like what? that. What? That's, that's how far back I go. Wow. You have some shitty seasons to watch. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, <laughs> There's gold in everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just but, put it in the background for stuff, you know? Like- yeah. I mean, that's his, like, uh, 11's still great. That's the, um, uh, that's the, uh n-word guy season oh right uh that's a really good season uh but 12 yeah i think it's uh season 12 13 14 mm-hmm. um as f- and 15 as far as i remember those are the seasons where trey parker was massively working on um the Broadway show. Yeah. Yeah, right. On uh, Book of Mormon. Book and of Mormon. He was, he was drowning in it, basically. Yeah. So, which, in his final year of Book of Mormon, that's when he did that Stan Everything is Shit episode, uh, which yeah. seemed like they were going to axe the show. That's that's the type of episode that it was. Jesus. But I thought it was really beautifully done. It just felt like he felt as though South Park was irrelevant to his life now. Yeah. Um. That, yeah, stuff was just shit. Was that before the game? Really the first game? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. And, uh... I mean, we should probably do a whole... I would love to watch, catch up to the episodes, and then do a whole thing on... Oh, for sure, on yeah. South Park, to be honest. Well, that Photoshop episode is going to be a... Doozy? A good one to watch. Yeah, the whole episode is basically, um, everyone's kind of starting to get girlfriends and stuff, and it's, as far as I remember, the episode opens with one of them, it's Clive, I think, walking down the hall with a girl on his arm, and he's showing everyone a photo of, of his girlfriend, but she's yeah. standing right there, yeah, and it's right. because the photo of her is photoshopped so much harder yeah, than yeah, the real yeah. person, and uh, Wendy goes on this crusade of, you know what, fuck this, because you're going to enjoy it when you see it, I honestly, it's it's really powerful to say it, but also to watch. So Yeah, yeah, I'll watch uh, it. You know I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, so Wendy is like, no, don't do this, don't do this, you know, don't get into this stuff. And the episode ba- raises a point, basically, that is, if you m- manipulate an image, you should legally be required, required to put a big fat logo on it, mm-hmm. you know, a big fat statement on it. This image has been, you know, photoshopped. Yeah. So that someone's not looking at it, you know... Uh, maybe like a uh, one of the big ones was um, Kara Knightley. Her boobs are always enhanced, um, and it drove her insane. So she did a topless shoot. She did, and um, yeah, she has really small breasts, and it's just crazy when you see her on movie posters and all this yeah. kind of stuff. It's like what you get, you said you know that's not what her body is like, but why are you trying? Why does she have to look that way? Yeah, you that's know. Right. F- first of all, she's incredibly beautiful anyway but yeah. the point is she's a talented actress that's right that's why you bring her on a movie right yeah she's a really good actress and why do we have to do this thing and it just reinforces that stuff so in the real world that was kind of her thing and in the south park episode wendy just is against it against it against it against it and then becomes completely overwhelmed and the episode finishes with her photoshopping an image of herself and crying Oh, jeez. And you just sort of go, oh, how are they going to end this episode? Oh, okay. Yeah. And it really, I love the fact that they will t- will take on an issue in that sort of way. Mm. Um, I was going to say what they should have done. What we should all do is, you know, if women's bodies are being photoshopped and enhanced, I mean, I just think men's balls need to be bigger. Just <laughs> they, saying. They do do that. Really? Of course they do. Balls bigger? All sorts of stuff. Uh, uh, tons of stuff. I they mean, they do it even for the Marvel people and stuff. They either in- enhance or shrink their t- their their groinal area. Oh, I guess, yeah. Uh, right, the tights. I was thinking it's in all stuff, circumstances. No, yeah. They absolutely do. That's amazing. Yeah, they're Could not, you imagine being They're not guy? shoving socks down there. They're, they're, you know, doing something in the computer. If there's like a dude... I mean, if they, is, if they have to, in quotation marks, by the have way. have to, yeah. If, if someone doesn't have a perfect balls to penis to tights ratio. <laughs> um, I, 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 part of me wants to be the, that person. 
that you know what I think like, is that Brian Cranston should be used to sell all underwear. That's that's what I think. Why Brian Cranston? There's a story he, here. No, because in Breaking Bad, you see him so much, like walking around in his whitey tidies, like he's wearing you know dad underpants the whole time. Who better? I mean, I'm sure that the the he's a normal looking dude. Well, that's well, there you go. that's exactly <laughs> why. But we already know that he wears them well. <laughs> it's true. He does the normal well. I just was wondering if there was something more to go this. Like he has a massive balls. Haven't been. Paying, I honestly haven't been paying attention. But I just like he. You see him all the time. It was actually slightly relief, not bad, relieving, but like I know that you're not supposed to fight fire with fire. But it was actually kind of interesting seeing the whole John Hamm um, massive penis kind of like hitting all the news and it being like this thing. Because I'm not sure if you ever. I have saw no that. idea what you're talking about. So, so I think it was. I don't remember where. I think it was a photo shoot for Mad Men and John Hamm. Like it. Like the the shape of his penis appeared in the photo. His legs split. It wasn't intentional. It just happened, and it just like really. Oh, it's a South Park moment. I think I can see your. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm talking about? No. What? Um, pro- pro- when Elaine does a photo shoot and and for her Christmas card and her nipple sticking out. Oh, really? And no. it's Kramer that took the photo. And then at the end of the episode, Kramer gets turned into a Cal- Calvin Klein model. And they realize that his, his junk is hanging out in the billboard. Oh, really? No. No, totally. I did not know that. I don't know. You're like 24 years behind, man. I, I'm more- It's one of my favorite episodes. I'm like 32 years behind. Like... Yeah, jo- George comes out and he knows that her nipple is showing in the thing. And he's like, hey, everyone got a Christmas card. I didn't get a Christmas card. How come I didn't get a Christmas card? And she grabs his face and just smashes it into her into her boobs and just ruffles his head around in her boobs yeah. and then throws it. You want a Christmas card? There's your Christmas card and walks <laughs> off. It's like, it's just Julia Louis-Dreyfus is just a hero of mine. And yeah, that, is, yeah. that is a perfect because we all know why moment. he wanted the Christmas card. That's, is that the kind of premise? Oh, it's a combination. It's also because he's insulted because he's George. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's kind of like that. But it's like, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal episode. And anyway, that's, that's what it's Well, about. the point being is that he, like, there was some kind of madman shoot. He kind of, like, it was a photo and it, you could see his junk. And then it became this thing. And everyone was talking about how big his junk is. And I think he even came, he, he had been interviewed and be like, yeah, okay, it's it's probably bigger than normal. You know, like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not particularly Why hiding it. Why is that a fucking topic of conversation? Well, so. yeah, that's right. And I... I I know that you shouldn't fight fire with fire, but part of me kind of enjoyed that. Like we we talk about women's figures, we talk about women's. That's not fighting fire with fire. That's just that's just that's it's a that's like a parallel conversation. It's not. It doesn't combat anything. It's not because because it's a man being talked about this time. It makes it different. It doesn't. It doesn't. No, that's it right. Different. It's wrong. No matter what. No matter who it is yeah. to objectify. It's like someone. there was a horrible thing I saw ages ago where Jude Law was like on holiday and all these. Um, you know, fucking paparazzi, man. If you are, oh, yeah. if you're English and you're famous, you are fucked. Yeah, the Britain is really yeah. Weird. Oh, because they have a like a hundred year old tradition of it, right? Um, the way that their media has worked. Awesome. Um, and yeah, he. Uh, not saying paparazzi, by the way. I'm just saying ta- tabloid. The yeah, way tabloid yeah. works. Um, there has been the sort of uh, yeah since the late 1900s, uh, 1800s, and uh. Yeah, they for the opposite reason, like showing photos of him and writing articles about it, and just being like, "Wow, we you know not that well endowed kind of stuff." It's oh like, really? What the fuck is wrong yeah. with these people? Uh, but I mean, it it just goes for everything. It just goes for, you know, these people are constructed in this way, and that's that's why that episode is just so beautiful because yeah. they're talking about you know, ten year old girls, nine year old girls, yeah, and we know in the real world that. You know, girls around that age, and certainly mm. a few years older and younger, are massively. Yeah, but it doesn't happen as much, but it starts to like. It's really heavy in that, like you know, teen, almost teen. Yeah, of course. Once the that's, hormones that's rush in, but there is like it's amazing to see how like five year olds or four years are already thinking appearance and look, and they're you know that that's very 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 different to uh, thinking about self in terms of what is sexually attractive. That's the fucked up thing. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's. I've had these conversations with my sister, you know. Uh, she's fairly aware of this stuff since having a kid. And you just think, like, like why the fuck does Target sell padded bras for eight-year-olds? Yeah, like, right? That's some twisted shit. Because people shit. buy it. That's why they sell it. 
do they buy it because they sell it or do they sell it because they buy it? I yeah, think they yeah, yeah. buy it because they sell it. I think this is a chicken and egg situation. <laughs> I think they buy it because they sell it. I yeah. think they buy it because if it wasn't available, you know, it's like... Mm. Uh, anyway, so that that's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful episode of South Park, which uh, was... It had such an impact because they decided not to have any jokes at the end. No music. You yeah, know, it didn't yeah. cut to... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It just sits... She cries and she then walks out and then it just sits on the manipulated image of her in silence as the credits go. Yeah. Um, and it was one of the most beautiful things that uh, I've seen Trey Parker do. And, and it... And you've seen him dance. <laughs> God, I wish. <laughs> that for me is like a, that. That for me is a life dream upon which I have not acted at all. Not the dancing part, but I would love to just sit at South Park Studios for the making of a single. Episode. Oh shit! Yeah, that that would just be that taco was so good for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Would six have been great days to there. Be yeah. yeah, that that would be a ticking off. I'd love to be the sound guy for it, like the guy that sits in the booth that presses record, like the assistant or whatever that like just sorts that shit out and sets the microphones up and does like the batch work of like file naming and all that shit. I don't know what everyone does all year though. They only work like ten in terms of well, production other jobs. They only work like twelve months, uh, twelve weeks a year. Yeah, yeah, they have other jobs and other hobbies and other things. Like they got it right. You think? Yeah, well, animators and stuff, promos and all the animators. Yeah, the, the animators would be on a cycle. You got it. Like you see that in the Australian film industry, we have. Um, it's like if you if you work in TV land, you you see them. They're all just like to jump from one show to the next to the next. Oh, to totally. Next, but next, animation just... is a bit, particularly when. By the way, like the type of animators they have at South Park Studio are not the final animators. Final animation is done in Korea, as we'd most most. Think. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, so, I figured, but I didn't know that. Yeah, so they're doing the assembly creation of everything and then everything is fine-tuned and put through the animation engines in Korea and sent back. Yeah. Uh, Which makes sense. It's amazing well, how they don't tell, they don't talk about that too much. No, you can't... It's just a it's just a wage thing. Cost of life in Korea is vastly different to what it is. No, no, I don't think it's bad or good. I just think that it's weird that they don't talk about that. Like, you don't see that as, like... You just see, like, the animation studio that does it. They don't... They don't they'll never talk about... The you know ten fifteen animators that'll be working on the production for wh- when they're just like send it off, it's you know they do they do in six days there. Oh really? Yeah yeah. Did I well, miss that? Watch it again. They t- yeah, they I'll talk about it. it. They say like oh and then we send it off to Korea and it comes back. Um, but yeah they so because the the complicated part of South Park is that everything is already built. It's that if they need anyone in a specific position, outfit, a new character, blah blah blah. Yeah, it's a creation of new assets. Is the hard part. Yeah, um, or otherwise it's just moving, moving yeah, figures exactly slowly. But consider yeah. segueing, by the way. Yes, uh, considering the simplicity of the appearance of the show, what is so interesting is apparently how complicated it was for them to uh, create the game engine. Um, okay, we should actually probably talk about the game. I, I think, guess so. I mean, this because I, I do want to do a podcast about. So you just finished the, the second the one, right? I just finished the second game, which so. is on a different engine to the first one. Which is, it, and it doesn't feel it. I mean, there's obviously very many differences. It feels. Do you know which engine it's on? Uh, Unreal. No. Uh, it's on an Ubisoft engine. It's on the really? same engine as the. Uh, Far Cry or something. No, something Ghost cool. Recon. Oh really? Uh, Wildlands and the Division. That's so. So they rebuilt <laughs> the game. They yeah they they reconstructed it so it would work for their in house engine so that they could uh, just make it a DLC not, an extra new one yeah so that basically that they can make more going forward which God I hope they do yeah yeah um, that to me would be a perfect thing like when South Park ends if they just bring out games every two or three years that would be a perfect continuation of the franchise in my mind yeah I think so um, but I I do love how what they've done ties into spe- specific parts of the. Franchise, um, that feels so feels like a dirty word to associate with. Especially because the game is um, about franchises, it's the whole premise yeah. of it. Yes, I love it. Yeah, yeah, we got to set up this franchise and then the branching Netflix series. <laughs> is that? Oh no, that's in the fuck. That's no, that in isn't that one. Oh, when do they call net? No, that's in no, the, they don't call Netflix. Yeah, in in season twenty one, I think it is. They that ties into. Um, oh really? Fractured oh, butthole man. and. Um, and, uh, yeah, they call up Netflix and they're like, hey, guys, we really, really want to get a series. It's basically about this guy and this character is doing this thing. Uh, yeah, so that's what we need. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Greenlit. 
<laughs> yeah, just paying out the fact that everything seems to get greenlit on Netflix. Yeah, which is totally not true. It's, uh... If you work in the Australian film industry, that's for damn sure. No one wants to fucking make a movie. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, bit of a weird relationship at the moment. But it's, uh... But, no one really knows, yeah. It hasn't really kicked off, I don't think. But, um... In a big way. It's content war at the moment. But anyway, that doesn't that's not what we're talking about here. But yeah, it's uh it's really well done, whereas the first game Stick of Truth refers back to uh that brilliant episode. Um uh Oh the div- it's the two returning- towers. Yeah, that's right, returning the movie and it's actually <laughs> yeah. got porn in it or something like that. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. Though it refers back to, but it's not actually about that episode. It's not a re remake of the episode. Oh no, so. but they're playing the same game. Yeah, that's right, which I love. It's I mean uh so, what's the difference between those two engines? Did you notice anything playing? Because uh, your your eye to that kind of detail is a lot better than mine. I don't nothing I, visually. Like even the way it, I mean, obviously we have the different uh, fighting mechanics, which I mean, Obsidian are known. They're broadened they're, as yeah. opposed to different. So yeah, I, I think- still think they're pretty. They're, they're like it's quite a dramatic change. Once you start going into the you know the three D realm, where you can start changing. Oh no, things. it's it's very different in result, but in terms of. Uh, mechanically or combat I think it's yeah quite the same fair it's, point um, if it's just sort of if you added movement to it uh, it's just that change of from it's introducing like Final Fantasy tactics as opposed to it being Final Fantasy old Final Fantasy yeah obviously. yeah um, so that positioning actually makes a difference uh, and as soon as you do that it becomes more involved because I did find that sort of the last Stick of Truth, I played in about 10 or 11 hours, and mm. the last, considering that's the length of the game, for two to three hours of it to be uh, another fight is... Um, well, I was godly by that point. So, well, it just like, was more of an annoyance than it was. Yeah, yeah. But the story, and I, I think it's one of those things where I forgave it. First of all, I didn't buy it for ages. I didn't yeah. play it when it first came out, so I paid like five bucks for it, so it's hard to complain. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, it's one of my favorite things in existence. So uh, it was just amazing to finally get to adventure through South Park. It was like it's just walking through and getting to go into the stores and hearing what the people have to say. And I, I actually think that the story in the first one I enjoyed all the way through more than the story in a fractured butthole. I think that the, I think the first one had, it really what's what's the word uh, from Dust Till Dawn did. There was a kind of point in that that game. I forgot where it was. Where suddenly it was like, what when the aliens come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to remember what the there was something about. That's when the kind of the, there was like a virus or something that comes about at that point. And then you're like, wait, hold on, this isn't just these kids trying to fight the stick of truth. This is now like aliens and like, he gets that like radar in his butt and all that shit. Like, yeah. Which is referring back to the very first episode of South Park. Yes, of course. Um, and, uh, was it come and gets a probe in his ass or something? And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think that's the episode name. And it's the thing that I always love about South Park is how often the boys think that they're playing a game, mm. uh, and not, considering how it has greater impact on the world yeah. because by all rights what they do shouldn't have a greater impact on the world and that's the that's the beauty of the entire premise of the you know the show and the game in turn I kind of like how stupid the adults are yeah like I which think- they bring up in different episodes it's like yeah absolutely. Damn it, our parents are so stupid <laughs> yeah and, and even if we're not blatantly stupid like it, they're stupid enough that they seem like kids but they're also like they still exist in that adult realm yeah, i really i really like that they, yeah, they, they I, haven't breached it too much but oh the adults are just dumb it's like no they're actually they still they still face adult problems but they just do them in a way that seems childish yeah i think it, it ties really into that idea that um there's a the part of it that aspect of it is that the boys despite being crass and rude and involved in things that you wouldn't involve a child in and they do yeah. stuff in the show that you just is like you couldn't do if it wasn't animation it's the idea of the purity of it it's the idea mm. of uh the innocence of childhood yeah um yeah. and that's why they see in such a rational way because they're not polluted by um the context of having grown up it's a, it's a really good position to be in as a as a writer, 
If oh, yeah. you step into the child mind, you have the ability to be like, well, we can say whatever we want because the child would say whatever they want, but we'll make them just smart enough that they can see the errors and what's going on around them, which is not something a child would in- in- normally have. Yeah, they have insights and stuff that children generally aren't capable of. Yeah. And that's the that's the putting the, the adult's point of view into a child, mm-hmm. um, you know, that that sort of going, no, but this is what it is. This is the answer. Yeah, yeah. So why are we talking about it? And then the, they almost take that away from the adults in that. Yeah, one of the one of the greatest examples of that is one of my favorite episodes, um, which is uh, the a hybrid episode. Thanks. Um, oh. And at the end of basically, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, uh, yeah. they they destroy San Francisco because San Francisco is uh, uh, already clouded by smugness, yeah, and it yeah. combines with George Clooney's uh, smug Sp- cloud created by his uh, Oscar speech, <laughs> and <Yeah>. um, <laughs> that's so good. It, it makes sense, yeah, yeah. and uh, uh... and at the end of the episode, uh, which combines with everyone who's driving hybrids, and yeah. um, it's a perfect smug storm, and. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying smug not smug smug, smug. <laughs> and uh yeah so at the end of the episode uh they say um well i guess we'll just have to get rid of our hybrid cars and the kids say hey couldn't you just drive the hybrid cars and not be smug about it <laughs> and mr Mackey says that's simply asking too much <laughs> and it's just one of those things of no, we don't think we can. <laughs> like, how the fuck be adults for a second? Yeah, rationally, yeah. but that's literally how the world is. Yeah, uh, it's we know facts and yet continue doing the wrong thing because, for whatever reason, can't be bothered. Can understand. I just say that, like, I was playing it. I was finishing the game yesterday, and Laura was with me, and I like we were literally watching the last the last movie clip, and it's just like. Obviously, Cartman's voice and and Laura's just saying like, "Oh my God, what the f-? like that that, that voice is must is so irritating." And and she was making comments of it, and it made me think of like, out of context, South Park is it it's so nonsensical. So so it seems like such crap out of context that like whenever someone steps in and just like listens to a bit of it, you can't help but be like, no, 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 you need to understand that the reason why it's yeah. okay to say that person got, you know, had sex in the ass at that one point is because it made sense like five stories back when this person had that, in, you know, like, and you just, it's like, if you're not a part of the South Park yeah. mind, you cannot... You can walk in an episode and go, why is Carl so pissed off? Because Carmen gave him AIDS, all right? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, and it's, it's like, what? How is that okay? How is that an okay? But it makes sense and it works if you... If you Are you sure? It, I'm not just sure. I'm HIV positive. <laughs> yeah. We, once, another perfect example. Like, that's a horrendous joke. Yeah. But you put it in the context of a piece of shit saying it. And th- this is this is one of the things I love about that show is that they pick moments to... Cartman is evil and mm. Cartman is does horrendous and despicable things. And yet they build things into his character where um, you see a lot of people who love the show, you know, because I like on Facebook and comments on you're weird like that yeah i got you like um you know follow south park all over the place and it's that thing of so many people just liking south park for the fucked upness of it yeah yeah. and that's completely missing the point the it has to be admitted that that's the foundation upon which they built this empire Mm. you know that's where it started from that's outrageous yeah yeah. uh but they realized what they could do with that by season four Mm -hmm. and they started moving into that area and talking about things and people just all these different issues and um so one of the things i love about you know particularly with carmen's anti-semitism in uh this 100th episode of south park which is the uh iraq war episode um who cares 100 episodes oh uh, yeah that's right um they get given and carmen goes back in time to uh see what the founding fathers would think about going to war with, war with iraq and mm. discovers that america is the type of country that could go to war but say that it doesn't want to yeah yeah <laughs> and that's like the the ethical standpoint or moral standpoint and um he's given a placard and it says bush is uh, bush is a nazi and all this like hitler loving fucked up anti-semitic stuff that that carmen says and yet he reads the he's asked to read the placard to a, to a news reporter and he says 
Bush is a Nazi. He yeah. he can't even he doesn't even know how Nazi is spelled. So it's that thing of he's it's that it's that thing of hatred stems from ignorance. So yeah. that's how they summarize all of his being a piece of shit is the fact that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And yeah. that's true just of the concept of hate. You know, you were taught to hate through lack of contact or education or, you know, ha- hatred is built through context. It's not inherent. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, uh, you know. Well, no, we put we put things into boxes and that's when we learn to hate something. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you know, there's a lot of cultures in the world that don't like each other very much, but mm. it's it's not like, I'm going to grossly oversimplify, but it's not like if you put a, if you raised an Indian kid and a Pakistani kid together, they're not going to hate each other. No, no. There's no reason for them to. And and it does, and that's that's what I love about South Park is that they do actually explore those things. And, and that's one of the things they explore a lot is the idea that hatred and separation and division is typically, uh, uh, typically stems from uh, ignorance mm. and... Um, and lack of education. It's it, it it comes up quite a few times throughout it. It's one of the things I love about the show. I mean, one thing I really like as well is like I have a thing about talking with human beings, and I think that in order to have, and this is why the the Facebook world and why the texting world and the the edited world of our lives is completely um, it's it's a little bit daunting because I think that we have to be to a certain degree vulnerable in order for us to be to to be accepted and to be to feel close to something and one thing that the, i think south park does really well is that despite i have a lot of disagreements with a lot of episodes because of the shock humor and uh, some of the content but in the same vein i'm also like they they they're vul- they're willing to be vulnerable enough that they don't step over a line um and if they do, then obviously that might I might lose my interest completely in them. And I, I, to be honest, I haven't watched them in years because of that. Um, but I also respect I respect someone who or people who want to say something that might be really hard to say or really controversial to say. That might I might be uh, not okay hearing uh, within a certain obviously within a certain boundary because I think that I can trust the people that. The, on the South Park team, that they're never going to go too far. Well, it comes from. I mean, the, that's why satire is such a great place to play, because the point of it is you can say really fucked up shit, and what you're you're not saying it, you're exposing the point of view of the person who you're portraying. Mm. So, um, that's why they go so far as they do. Because if they want to say horribly homosexual things, they're not being homosexual. They're portraying. You mean they're not being? They're not being homosexual. Sorry, they're not being homophobic. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say they're they're portraying the point of view of someone who is. Yeah. And the louder and bigger and more intense that homophobia, uh, the more it makes that person look like a piece of shit, and that's the point of the exercise, and. It's why I've always always loved satire since I, you know, began to get it when I was about, I don't know. Not to suggest that people who don't like satire don't get it. I don't know. I don't think... I think there's, like, a point in which if you're uh, genuinely offended by something or something makes you genuinely feel not good or uncomfortable, then it's okay to not like the way in which it's portrayed to you. I tend to find... I tend to think that you can see when someone's being satirical and when someone's just being nasty. Yeah, but you can still find that uncomfortable and unbearing, oh, like, and and not yeah. be okay to watch it. Be like, I'm not, it's not my thing. Yeah, like, not to suggest that it shouldn't exist. No, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, not. I'm not saying that that's not okay. But yeah. like, it's not like I don't know that stuff. Like, how many Jew jokes from Carmen do you think got spat back at me in school? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I I get it, but the the point of Cartman's character is too important to me for that to make a difference to me. Okay. Because the point of him is exposing how toxic and ignorant hatred is. That's yeah, that's yeah. what his character is. And people is. who envy that don't realise that the people are laughing at that person. If you think Cartman is funny because of what he's saying, you are... You are Cartman. 
Yeah, yeah, you're agreeing with him. That's how it is. If you think it's funny because that person, because he's an idiot and because he's ignorant and because that's what people like that say, yeah, it's a totally different thing. And yeah, it's to, to me, the difference between the offensiveness, like going out to hurt people versus trying to make a point, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty different. And of course, people are going to get hurt at some point. But yeah, I mean, like I, like I can tell you, it's, <laughs> I grew up with it. And the one thing yeah. I could say about South Park is Jew jokes happen more than any other type of joke. Uh, it's more than jokes about black people, Mexican people. Let's just raise everyone that gets made fun of. Yeah, Lesbians, yeah. gay people, transsexuals, everything. The Jew jokes are in there probably four or five times more than any of those combined. Uh, so I get it. Like, I get that people could be offended, but, uh, well, not even, not, and, I, and I have been offended by things that have happened in it, but like, but I also don't think it's just directly that, oh, people get offended. I think it's just sometimes people, it's, it's a style of something that it's a style of, uh, expression that's not for everyone's taste. Yeah. It's but I think I'm that goes for any satire. It's like, if you watch, yeah. if you watch, um, one of my favorites is, um, uh, the thick of it, and that's a piss take on government, mm-hmm. and it's really it's really awful, yeah, and toxic and nasty. It's a really viciously nasty show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't seen it, but whatever. It's it's really nasty, but I love every second of it, and I've watched it many times because because you're just sitting there going. They all fucking smile in our press conferences, but you know that's what's happening when they go back indoors. Mm. Uh, and that, to me, is just... I've always enjoyed that. I've always enjoyed that that uncomfortability and that awkwardness and that that showing people what people are really like uh, in broad, sweeping terms. Mm. Uh, that's, that's why I've always liked that type of thing, where it's just... Yeah. If it makes you feel uncomfortable or it offends you, then don't watch it. Yeah, exactly. Of like, course. Yeah. I get why people don't enjoy South Park. Yeah, of course. I think it's a shame. I do think it's a shame because I think that they have incredibly important points to make that I'm not aware of any other show that covers the breadth of topics that they do uh, in a sort of expose way that they do that's in the form of entertainment as opposed to, like, a documentary or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, this is now a podcast about South Park and satire. <laughs> uh, and it should be, but... It's- well, this is... See, this is the problem with those two games, is that you can't talk about them in isolation of the TV show. Yeah. Because... They are. They put you into two episodes of the TV That's show. That's right, yeah, yeah. That's why it's so fucking good. But what we need to do is talk about those, even if they're... Even if they're in the form of a TV show, we need to talk about those episodes as video games, if if you know what I mean. So I think that, like, it's awesome. Because you're right, it's really difficult to separate it. We're talking about those really important points and I, that I want to cover on the show, talking about the show itself. But, uh, so I think what we should do is break down the story arcs of both and just kind of discuss what those meant to us. So, I mean, I it's been a while since I played Stick of Truth, which is terrible. Yeah, it's been four years since I played it. Oh, shit, we're both going to be rubbish at this. Maybe we should both just talk about the the other one. Butthole? hole? Yeah. Like, I mean, I look, I remember the gameplay differences. I don't really remember the plot, aside yeah. from the fact that right. they had to get the Stick of Truth. So, Fractured but Hole yeah. is what we're going to talk about, because uh, Stick of Truth, it sounds like a great idea, but it's... You're right. We're, I want to. I was trying to catch myself up on a bit of it, and it's just like ah, oh, it's just look. The the main thing from that game was two things, which was it brought me finally. It was that entry back into the fact that I was never into RPGs, and I was never yep. into RPGs particularly of that type. Uh-huh. Never turn-based. liked turn based, yeah. uh, almost anything mm. except for um, tactics and stuff. So, turn-based of that type, I went, oh, I like games like this, and then started playing a bunch of Japanese games in particular that I hadn't dealt Masters with Masters of it, right? Um, like, those guys, if there's anyone... They're that- good at it, but I tell you what, the Americans are a lot better at keeping the fucking, like, conversations short, <laughs> and the cutscenes, like, not 
totally inflated and annoying. And but uh, I'm creepy. playing Xenoblades uh, Chronicles 2 uh, DLC at the moment, and it's just like, oh my god! But the main thing is, why do they? Why in Japanese games d- d- do they tend to reinforce and reinforce and reinforce what their point was? Like I watch yeah, a cutscene, yeah, yeah. it goes for three minutes, and I go. Could have done it in thirty seconds. Oh yeah, because yeah. Because you've just said the it's same like, oh my thing god, the doors opening. Different ways. The doors opening. The yeah. doors opening. <laughs> it's really, that's what I loved on that panel when the guy who made um, Braid, uh, what's his name, Jonathan. Um, it's got a weird last name. Anyway, uh, Jonathan Blow. Uh, when he was explaining after the Fez guy went, yeah, Japanese games they fucking suck. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan Blow was saying, no, this is what I think is wrong with Japanese games. Totally hit on the head. It was like this is the, this is what's wrong with the dialogue. Why does it take thirty hours for us to get all the gameplay mechanics, all that type of stuff? But yeah, this this game really reminded me. Stick of Truth reminded me of that, and the other main, uh, well, not reminded me, showed me that I enjoyed that type of stuff, and introduced me. To for the first time of what it feels like to be in a South Park episode, that that truly like bowled me over. Um, yeah, the fact that when I when the gameplay started and I just had the character sitting there, I went, "Oh my, wait, this isn't a cutscene. Yeah, yeah, it's the game. Oh my god, the game is the. Sh- it looks like the show. Yeah, yeah. And everything about it, the way you move, the way you run, the way you do talk to every- people yeah. and everything. It's just everything is the show, and it's perfect. And even though for both of the games, they're they're a, bo- a bit above average of what they do. They're not amazing games gameplay wise, I don't mm. think. But for me, because I love South Park so much, it just. Yeah. Shoots it through the ceiling, and any downfall gameplay wise doesn't matter. That's you know, Stick of Truth I thought was terribly repetitive for the last third of the game, mm. but I still the reason I finished it was I was just loving it so much because I was loving every second I had with those characters in a way I'd never had before. Yeah, choices. I loved the um, which they did really well in in both games. I love the the power they bring to the, the, these characters, like when they like appear or they like, you know, they have their special moves. I think that's just, just something that I enjoy so much with like, with, for example, when Butters does his like special attack comes in, he's like, Argh! and then oh, like Butters. trips over and is like, <laughs> you know, like yeah. this cute little, or they hit each other and they say, Hey, you're like, cause break. all that aspect is in their head. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. All I mean. And yeah. yet then they beat up people and do stuff. All yeah. Really funny. I love the, I love thinking about whether, what's happening is real or not yeah i always i always really well, they definitely beat up randy <laughs> yeah that was that's so good drunk randy red was, wine randy that's yeah it. king his own yeah. car that was amazing i did a screenshot of every boss uh because you know they come up with like that image and it's like boom 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 yeah yeah and it shows them uh, and what their name is and i did a screenshot every time that happened it's like this is amazing like the person oh, who girl. did that like <laughs> oh and the names <laughs> The names are so good. Cool girl, because she has a bunch of phones. Yeah, it's so, like, it, it touches <laughs> on South Park. This is why we're talking about a fractured but whole. Um, it touches on the way that the South Park, whole, the whole idea of these kids who are just, they're just being kids. It shows that realize it. because, yeah. uh, like, despite her age, uh, you know, Wendy's always been except with a few exceptions. She's been quite a staunch feminist, and so it's yeah, yeah. a very funny thing for her to be called because she's literally gone, I have a bunch of phones, and part of my power is being able to contact people through my phone. Call girl, got it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, it's, and then it's so layered with, like, like what is a call girl? Or what, yeah. what is the way that she's <laughs> displaying herself and everything. And even the lines that they say throughout the thing, it's, it's so brilliantly satirical and innocent. It's just... Uh, like, I'd, uh, I reckon, see, one of the things I really liked about it and the reason I thought that you were going to swap sides at some point in the game was, mm. you know, I was going along and just thinking, man, Kyle and Stan are my two favourites and they're the best friends of the show and all that stuff. How come they're split apart? This sucks. Oh. Um, and I love that you do eventually get to... Uh, Play as both. Play, play was both he's tool shed? tool shed? Tool shed. and um, human kite. Human kite. <laughs> Once again, it's like the Jewish kid calling himself the human kite is so brilliantly innocent. Like, obviously isn't, you know, because obviously the people who are writing this are mature adults, but it's just so brilliantly crafted into that. Like Kite's not a slur. Is it not? No. I thought that wasn't. K-I-K-E is. 
No, that's my point. Is oh, that it's, it's similar. It's it, it's yeah. clearly a reference yeah, yeah, to yeah. that. It's not trying to hide that. Yes, I understand it's not a slur. I understand Call Girl isn't actually a slur either. Like, no, I love the fact that Carl's cu- cousin Carl is also a human kite. Yeah, that's right, because he's God, pretending I to. fucking hate Carl's cousin Carl. Uh, yeah. He's a great, great person to not be able to stand. Uh, he's... Uh, oh, you want me to play some baseball? Uh, I hate that. It's, they do it. They're annoying. Uh, um, I'm, I'm actually like looking up really quickly all the characters. But Butters is one of my all-time, like, Butters is my favorite Captain character. Chaos, is it? Or is... No, uh, Professor Chaos. Professor Chaos. Oh. And, and his second-in-command is General Disarray. Yeah. <laughs> General Disarray. Oh, my God. Let's... One of my favorite names of anything. Let's talk about freaking uh, Tolkien. Or Token. Token. <laughs> I just, uh with the it's just all his weapons and he's because obviously he's the the rich family in yeah. South Park and he's just got like all well, the Tupperware containers are fine but he can like he transforms into Iron Man pretty much yeah which is like the rich kid the rich kid with the, the all the tools <laughs> and all the toys and like he he's even one of his weapons is like one of his things is like a really expensive Nerf gun kind of automatic turret thing yep. like my God you guys just <laughs> slotted this in so well. Um, all characters of that that when they originally announced the game, that was one of the things I really found to be that I've never seen in a video game announcement trailer, which was um, I think it was something like eighty percent of the trailer that they did when they originally announced Fractured um, Butthole. They were playing the same game as Stick of Stick of Truth. They were playing Fantasy. And then right at the end, someone comes on and goes, oh, no, no, guys, it's not, that's not cool anymore. We're not doing fantasy. You've got to do superheroes. And then they switch to superheroes. Yeah, yeah. And yet, so that's the whole concept of their thing is that they, like, they're kids and they want to play as what the latest thing is. But they were willing to make such a joke of it that they didn't bring that up front into their announcement trailer. They just went, yeah, we'll show them doing stuff. And people, you know, someone might turn off the thing going, ugh, it's fantasy again, ugh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're willing to lose the the point one percent of the things. Yeah, let's go through this. This is amazing, uh, and let's. Um, I want to talk about all the characters. So, you've got the coon already. Like, uh, King- uh, yeah, he's great. He's great. I mean, I'm assuming there's a reference to that name. Oh, it's just an offensive name, but he's yeah. a raccoon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Once again, a beautiful. Oh, one of my favorite characters, which I loved the episodes of in the actual show, was Mysterion. Oh yeah, he's the Mysterion. best. The fact that his power is that he's immortal, but no one remembers that he died. Yeah, but that obviously isn't what happens in the game. But like that's his superpower. But like they include that. Like he, the, um, one of my favorite thing was fighting with him. Who's an awesome like the character does these really cool tricks, and he's so confident and cocky like i love the batman and then it's like he'll blow himself up turn into a ghost yeah and then like fly his special move after that is fly to the heavens yeah and then be given the the gift of like the, the you know the women that obviously kenny loves and then make that decision and come back and heal his his friends it's just uh uh mysterion he doesn't get the does he use a psp in it no no yeah, no see that would have been that would have been a cool power as if he like brings in the armies of heaven using the psp Oh my god, I just realized that I'm looking at the website. So just think about that, all right, Ubisoft? The website uh, for Ubisoft lets you go through the characters, and I just realized Day. Oh, that's, you, can ch- you, can- you can change the characters from their, from their uh, real identity to their superhero identity. Yeah. Mysterion. Uh, that was a big, that, that was a fucking amazing non reveal. Uh, when Mysterion was first revealed. Oh, yeah, that was uh, amazing. Where, no, 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 you're thinking of the second time. But the, fir- the first time is they go, so who is Mysterion? And then he takes his ha- ha- uh, his... He reveals his face. And it's like, no one knows who he is because no one's seen Kenny before. Well, they all know who it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah they all know right. who it is, but we don't know because every child's base model face is exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't think it'd be him. <laughs> <We're just laughs> <in> <laughs> yeah, who the fuck is it? Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. Oh, uh, here we go. Super Craig and Wonder Tweak. Uh, I love their, I, their, see, their whole thing. I love Craig. Mm. But I fucking hate him. Like he's such a dickhead. Yeah, he he's, is. It's just, that I love him for that it, reason. But I love the that the, this in this game they talk about their relationship as a couple. Yeah, well, that's be, so that's that's an arc that happens in the show for a whole I, season. Before I assume so, and yeah. and it's great because I mean it's so. Like I've said before, I forgot what we were watching. 
it was a, on one of the podcasts that we did recently and it was about you know like talking about homosexuality in like a really natural terms that these are just normal people that are attracted to each other and it's not this like yeah. big statement that's made and which is again thing. like how they use innocence and childhood and 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 all that stuff like normalization with yeah. the, with the kids i mean that that's the great thing about the kids in south park is that they've uh, there would be an exception probably with Carmen, but I don't ever remember it happening, but they've never been homophobic, um, mm. which is that, like, that Fags episode is is a really big thing. So I don't they, remember that one. So they have this big episode where all these, they're talking about motorcyclists who, like, come through on their big chopper bikes and their Harleys and stuff through yeah. towns. Like, blah, 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 blah. And for the children, that word has become so ingrained as, an, as like, an annoyance. As, a, as a negative yeah, yeah. that that's what they keep saying and everyone thinks they're being homophobic. And they're like, no, these guys, like, they're, they're a bunch of fags, like, coming through. And it's that thing of the children have heard this word and associated with something negative. But if they were ever to connect it with gay people, they would go, uh, in, it happens in the episode. They're like, well, no, they're not a fag. They're just gay. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and, it, and it's that thing of, um, it's not saying that the word is all right to say, by the way. No, 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 but, no. Of but, course. but the point is that uh, the. The kids don't give a shit about that because yep. that's actually the default of a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The default of a child is acceptance. That's right. And 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 yet it's the re- everything else is built around typically by what the adults around them uh, you know, shape them and how yeah. they how they what they think about be- that. Yeah, so in yeah. the show, it's sort of like oh okay, to, you know, tweaking Craig are dating. All right. Um. And and that that point is just yeah. If kids were left to their own stuff, that that is what would happen. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. what I liked about the way that they brought those two together. Like it was uh, there was a story. They're already broken up, aren't they? At the start of the game. They're broken. No, they're fighting. At, they, oh, I think the, they are either broken the, up the, or they're the fighting. The fracture is what causes the breakup, isn't it? No, not even. No, no. It's the beginning of the game. They're. They're fighting against each other. One of them has the other one's laptop. The other one has the other one's hamster. Yeah, they yeah they are broken up. Yeah, yeah. And they are in obviously different teams as well, which makes a big difference. And then you're the one that kind of like silently comes in and and basically passively get, brings them together. And they did that amazing, um, uh, you know, fighting like was it responsibility like uh, the way people perceive you and they fight those kids inside the gym. But it's just a brilliant like once again it's just two kids that like each other and that's that's the story and I think it's really beautiful and they do come together and then it becomes a, the, their um, super move ends up being more powerful because they work as a team yeah. it's just like oh my god it's just they've been losing viewers by the way through that and uh, the anti-Trump stuff good I oh, mean totally. sorry terrible that's... for money but like great oh, for, for like they don't give a shit yeah yeah who cares like it's... it's still like the number two most watched comedy show in the US or something really yeah, yeah they deserve massive it massive viewership I, I didn't think that that would be the case but yeah they've hemorrhaged like quite a few viewers because they're pissed off that they are um you know anti-Trump or anti yeah they're too yeah. PC and the thing that but it's so funny because they had an entire really season arc dedicated to well no they are they are. They are. They're rightfully. They're not political correctness gone mad. They're just politically correct. That's the thing that is so fucking ironic about the show is that they say the points that they are making are very politically middle ground moderate. They never make really hard line points about anything. They're quite moderate. Do you it's mean they're just, quite fence sitting when it comes to? No, a no, no. They're not fence sitting. Yeah, they're moderate. They're just on slightly either side of an argument they take each thing as it comes they don't go no well fuck you you're on that side so i'm not agreeing with you they're not polarized yeah you know unless it's a huge issue and they just sort of think that's a really dumb thing to do like president trump or going to war that reminds me so much of that amazing episode we're gonna keep doing this but whatever uh the book the mormon episode mm. and how like right at the end the the mormon kid comes up to was it stan yeah, it's like know. Like, I, we never did anything to you, so if you don't like the way we are, then fuck you. And then yeah. he walks off. Oh, that kid's kind of cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. And it's a realize that uh, my favorite bit of that is the realization that the that, that Matt Stone and Trey Parker have been fucking with the audience and trying to make you hate these people so much because of how stupid it is. And then right at the end of the film, uh, they get they, revealed they, that uh, they think that Mormonism is stupid. That's true, but the, I mean, like, uh, that that's obviously clear considering also the, the play <laughs> and everything like that. But it, I think that it's still... 
and the like, flashing thing that comes up all the time that says this is what Mormons actually believe. Yeah, yeah, but it is also <laughs> rubbed in your face at the end. You, oh, totally. When they, I walked they, away they, going, they, yeah. wow, I am a fucking judgmental prick. It's like, why yeah. can't I just let I people be happy? I still could have friends with him. Yeah, that's right. That's the point. Why was I a dick? Yeah. Like, why? I mean, I could have said, maybe I don't want to hear this anymore. We still could, but... we still could have been friends with that kid. Yeah. That's the, I mean, it is, it's a joke and yet they're doing that at the same time. And I, and I think that's the great thing about them. I mean, honestly, you know, when you, when, that stuff does get really complicated because it's, when you look at the history of it, like Mormonism and stuff like that, when you look at the person who created it, it's he—he he, he was a, a shyster, like he was a fraudster. He was not a good. Person. A shyster? Never heard yeah. of that. It's just like a fraudulent kind of like cheating person. Oh, right. Um, right. and and so I think like that is the basis of their this is stupid, and this exact same thing when they do Scientology, it's that yeah, yeah. this is this is a money scam. Um, that's where it came from. You might have people that believe it now, but the core of it is this, and that's the point that they're making. And so they don't, I, they don't really take really desperately hard lines on anything. They're mostly quite moderate and quite politically in the space that most people would be in. They just express it through something that is really controversial. Mm. They say it in the most extreme way possible, but what they tend to be saying is something really sort of, oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty true. Which I think leads us to our next two heroes, um, which I don't know what I feel about them. I, obviously, I don't mind. So we've got Tupperware, <laughs> and we have Captain Diabetes. <laughs> uh, it's, it, I laugh well, and I feel terrible funny. at the same time. Well, like, <laughs> it is... It, it actually does make me laugh because of how he's, he's, silly like, it is. But, it, but uh, I mean, I feel bad for someone who actually has diabetes. And Yeah, but the kid's wearing it. He's yeah, like, yeah, it's I'm a badge of honor. Diabetes. Yeah, I mean... And he what, goes out on his, uh, like, you know, his sugar rage. That's, yeah. <laughs> fuck, it's funny. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I really hope oh, people fuck. hate us. One of my this. favorite parts in it is like, oh, wait until you get to the character, I guess. But yeah, yeah, we'll get to no, it. No, yeah, I yeah. love Captain Diabetes. I, I, that character's always annoyed me, and that was the first time that I, oh, he's that was the first time I really this. liked him. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he, he was so brave and 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 vicious, and he, you know, he takes the sugar knowing that it'll it'll affect him. It'll yeah, affect yeah. him. It's yeah. I know that might sound like a like it's a bit sort of. Uh, Silly or something, but that I I really liked his character in it. No, no, I totally did because didn't. I don't think they've brought up his diabetes before in the show, but I don't think they've ever really done it like that. Mm. I think it was to do with gluten or something with him previously, but yeah, uh, I thought I loved Captain Diabetes. I thought he was great. I, I and once again, I love this kid perspective on something really serious like diabetes is not a joke but then you realize he has it so what's he gonna do well yeah as well as the fact that he's a child and he doesn't realize how much damage he's doing to himself by injecting himself with sugar with like you know i think it doesn't he drink he he eats and drinks something and that's what gets him his diabetes yeah and and obviously he's doing damage to himself obviously it's the wrong like when you look at the character it i think you you got to be a little bit dumb to look at it and be like oh yeah that's who's someone with diabetes. That's how you get stronger. It's like no, it's fucking stupid. It's completely mad, and they, they address that through nonsense. the game. <laughs> it's also just nonsense. It is, but they there's a moment in the game where he can't use his power anymore. Yeah. He overdoes it, uh, and that and they kind of like it's not a big confrontation. It doesn't like change your whole perspective on diabetes. No, but, but it also like it may, it turns into a dumb game. If it if he could do it an unlimited number of times, it ties back into the gameplay. It would just be dumb. So they allow themselves into this story beat of having him not be involved in the next section. But it's that thing of, I'll be honest, I kept going, right, so I can just pump this kid with sugar all the time. Yeah, I did actually. I had that thought when yeah, I was totally. playing it. And, and I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But that, uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was cool. I it made that- me feel like I laughed, but it made me feel uncomfortable as well. <laughs> Like, just like... Uh, South Park Zone, you're in it. That's good. That's Yeah, I guess that is. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I don't know. Is there something about Tupperware and the African-American culture? Like, Honest to God, I don't know. not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I, I could don't. be wrong. But just, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's that or um, if it's... 
Yeah, I I don't know. Oh, God. If it just sticks really, to that Iron Man I don't want to Google that. What is yeah. it with black people in Tupperware? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what what kind of fucking disgusting white... I, don't, I have no idea. But also, at the same time, you know, uh, Token's copped enough. So if it's nothing, if it's nothing to do with him being African American, no. he's copped enough shit. And, so and it's also it's like, to be I think honest, it's more to do with him being rich. But I was about to rich? say it could be an Iron Man thing. That's that's what it like. Going back to like his superpower, which he basically yeah. turns into Iron Man. I think it might. That's what be he'd that. have around. But <coughs> I think proper Tupperware, the brand, is fairly expensive. Yeah. So it might be something to do with that. That's that's super interesting. Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, <laughs> oh, they kept the. Uh, uh, Disable people together. Yeah, who would have thought? that? This is another one that makes me feel deeply uncomfortable, <laughs> but also because I laugh a little bit. I love Fast Pass so much. Yeah, because it's, it's slow. It, it's, so, it's so deeply uncomfortable because they do it They do it in such a ridiculous way. Yeah, but Jimmy's way. awesome. He is because he's so... He, he's such a good representation of someone who has a, in a like a, like a struggles with something like speech and he's a, he, he wants to be a comedian he's actually a oh, really yeah. good comedian all he does is public sp- what he does is public speaking yeah that's, that's his like, passion and then he's also that's what he struggles in like yeah. the fact that like he's uh, he's called fast pass but he struggles with walking like it's such a brilliant juxtaposition on himself that I just I love it and I think they they, they do it so funnily but I can't help but also feel really bad when I laugh one of the things that's really important is that they love these kids Mm. They're not just, like, it's why they had to do more with Butters. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll get to him, I guess. But they, will. you have to, they think of them like three-dimensional real people people that they're doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, it's not, you know, it, yeah, it's fucked up and it's, and it's all that type of stuff. But they approach humor from a everything or nothing standpoint mm. and once you do that you're gonna you're gonna do that type of shit yeah they're awesome characters they are you know there's nothing that they're, they're, well, that's they're enabled okay. by their disability they're in inha- they, they they take their disabilities and they turn them into a core part of their personality that enhances who they are mm. rather than it being about disability and both of them have always been like that in the show yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I think you're right when you say that they're they've kind of they. It's almost like they're talking about their family members. It's certainly how I feel because every one of these characters, regardless of um, their backstory or their, you know, what makes them unique, I guess, when it comes to the world of satire, is they they seems to be handled with a certain degree of love. Mm. Like they they very rarely go too far. They don't want to they don't want to punish a character other than maybe Cartman. They don't want to punish a character. To, like to such a degree where you're like, oh, you know, like that's a really messed up thing to do to them. Like you, they they put them in circumstances. It's almost like taking taking anyone and just plopping them into normal real life kind of situations. But because they're different, or they have, you know, whether that be a class difference, or you know, an ability difference, or like, uh, you know, like or, or a particular you know, culture difference or whatever it is. And they plop them into these normal circumstances and then just let them perform. And that's kind of what happens. Uh, So that's why I still feel like it's okay. It's not like they're like intentionally dragging them through the children's point of view. Yeah. Uh, But speaking over the long term, by the way, it certainly starts from that, like, you know, fart joke. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get nine year olds to say really fucked up stuff and and do fucked up things. But it's, it's long surpassed that. And I will admit to my discomfort to like to the this brand of like like I said, I do I still find it funny, but I do actually feel deeply uncomfortable doing it. I I do find the the shock humor like very rarely very rarely breaches like nah, that's too fucked up for me when it comes to the show. But it certainly gets close and it's certainly when I think of it logically, when I, when I take myself my kind of just like instinctive enjoyment of the show out of it i feel dirty and i feel wrong i'm not suggesting that's the right feeling to have i'm just saying that i do feel that uh if it was not a cartoon for me it would be vastly different yeah it's the fact that it's a cartoon is very intentional and it enables it to eliminate those issues people the representation of 
people in the show is overwhelmingly very diverse. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. diverse, and it's really not even just. So, how do you address diversity? For instance, in the South Park version of addressing diversity, is they literally have a black kid called Token. Yeah, yeah. By saying, "Why the fuck do people have like token black people and stuff?" That's right, and he's a kind of token black person in yeah. To the point of there's that episode where was it the Will Smith family? Yeah, come in and it's like you can't have the riches. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And you can't have two. And then every everyone's like, yeah, if they kick all the black people out. Yeah, yeah. And the very last line of it is Mr. Garrison goes, wow, I'm so glad we got rid of all those n-. And then it cuts to the music. <laughs> he wants to get rid of black people. Yeah, yeah, that's And everyone right. else thinks they're trying to get rid of the rich people. Yeah, that's right. But what are they, <laughs> re- what are they really doing? Uh, Thank God we got rid of all those And it's And that's also a beautiful comment on, like, the that's, influence, that's yeah, that's right. Like that's a some- lot of places, to be honest. But that's that's very, very strongly the American thing. Like they have very separated neighborhoods. Black people and white people do live very separately, um, predominantly. Do you? That's like that. I mean, in your perspective here, in Australia, oh, where no. we are, totally different. Because I like, still feel like there's regions like we have, like you know, like yes. But the thing that <laughs> okay, the difference is predominantly it's areas of migrants living together is mm. the difference here. Oh, okay it's yeah. not it's not people that could speak the same to speak the same language to yeah, share the same Cabramatta, culture Cabramatta where it's like yeah. if you're a white person walking through Cabramatta you feel like you're in Vietnam yeah, yeah. Uh, it's but, you know yeah. there's, and of course people who can who speak the same language who share the same food are going to want to stay together totally there's, there's always the goods and bad to it right mm. um, like the Viet gangs and all oh, fucked up yeah. terrible murders and drugs and all this sort of stuff that happened because a lot of the those things were imported at the time the community and the cops fought the shit out of it and yeah. they, they nutted out and got rid of it but we're not we're not we're not the same the areas that are predominantly white you know like white in Australia are mostly because migrants haven't gone there yet yeah no, no, that's a food actually I didn't even think of it that way. It is very different. Yeah. Like when when I lived with um so, you know, uh <coughs> about five five and a half years ago now, but the um living with um I won't say their names actually because Yeah, of course you don't uh, learn permission. But yeah, I lived with a mixed race couple mm-hmm. uh, he's pakistani and and she's white and one of the things they said after we've been living together for a while was they came home one night after being in the city and they said do you know one thing we've noticed um because we feel like it's been a bit weird going out at night here I said what no one's abused us that's so i said that's what so are you talking about they went a, so- we can't go out in london without getting abused like at some point or something happening uh. because we're a mixed race couple and weirdly, I was coming back from the US in 2016 on a flight and an American woman was sitting next to me and I, we somehow got into a conversation. And she said the exact same thing. It was so weird. She said, you know what I love about coming to Australia? She comes frequently. She said, just interracialness. Like, you see yeah. interracial couples everywhere, but you don't think about it? And I went, yeah, yeah. no, it doesn't. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas in America, that's what America's like. You know, in any city, you're talking about this is where the black people live, this is where the white people live, this is where the Hispanic people live. Though I did watch a video by, you know, Natalie Tran? Mm. Yeah, she she's now not doing YouTube, as far as I know, mostly, but she did an interesting, like, I think it was like a 30 or 40 minute doco about the way Asian culture is perceived by Asians and by you know, people who aren't Asian. So, like, if you're dating someone who's Asian, there's, like, these, all these, like, negative stereotypes. She talks about the, the industry, like, the film industry and stuff like that. And it was a really interesting, like, it, to, to say that it, like, it certainly is a lot less of an importance here, but it certainly does exist as well, I just just to be clear. Yeah, of course it of course. exists. But the fact of the matter is that when... The, the difference is when push comes to shove, Australians... Are demonstrably, statistically not racist. When when situations arrive, where um, where on all of those sorts of levels in terms of who lives where, who dates what, all that type of stuff, uh, that's not that's not what we're like. 
in 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 America you have like you still have people who hang black people yeah. when they have an opportunity. I mean, Jesus. It's, you know, it's 200 what 100 and 100, 100 what is that? about 155 years ago they still enslaved them. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's that's never been healed. So yeah, it's a big difference. And that's why race is such a huge thing in South Park, why it's talked about quite frequently. Because to us it's a very, very, very different issue. The types of race race issues that occur in Australia are overwhelmingly in minority areas. They have to be regarded as different from uh, refugee situations because that's where we do see a lot of racism and stuff yeah, come out. But the fact of the matter is when you look at people voting for One Nation and stuff at the moment, from a lot of the polling, they go, oh, it's because I'm pissed off at the Labour Party and the Liberal Party I don't know who to vote for. Yeah, yeah. Now, fuck off, that's a shit excuse. Oh, shit, yeah. But it makes sense. I understand it. I understand why someone, you know, would, would go, fuck you, do a fuck you vote. Yeah. So that's... Anyway. It is different. Totally, um, totally important. <laughs> I just, we're very aware of the fact that we can... Yeah, cut that out. <laughs> no, maybe not. We'll see. Because uh, I think it's still good. Um, it's next on our, our list is... Mosquito. Uh, I can't even do the can't even do the voice right. It's like, and uh, one of my favorite characters who uh, ended up being in my uh, top team when it came to the game, which was uh, Core Girl. Yep, she is. Let's let's read out her description. Answering the call of justice, Core Girl disconnects criminals and places their evil ambitions on hold, extending her influence from social media. To the town of South Park, Wendy Testerberger <laughs> uh, uses technology and an army of followers to unfriend evil, and it's just so beautifully innocent and amazing. And and there's so many little references when you play the, the little one-liners they say to each other that just I think just makes me feel quite nice. They don't have all the characters because that's not all of them. That's just the bulk of them. I feel like there's missing, like, heaps from this list. That'd be all the playable ones, wouldn't it? Oh, well, they're obviously missing, um... Oh, the amazing DLC. Uh, Captain Crunch! Mintberry. Mintberry Crunch! Mintberry Crunch! Amazing! Especially that... Did you play the DLC for that? No, I haven't. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, don't worry. I'm Thanks not for spoiling. Nothing spoiled? God. You know that no, you're getting that character. I... I yeah, but there is an ending to that which is just yeah, so good awesome. that like literally it's like it's an awesome DLC itself but the one there's a one liner at the end or sorry maybe two liners at the end which changes the, your whole feelings and it's so good <laughs> and I won't get into it um, but, he, but he's also one of my favourites because I just love how ridiculous they made him oh it's cool for him to come back it, it it really is, and he's such a freaking amazing, cool thing. There's so many more characters. No, this I'm I'm not I'm not okay with this. You 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 tell me more because <laughs> I, I really want to look up. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's all the playable ones. But I remember seeing heaps more. Mintberry Crunch, Mysterion, Uh Super Craig, the Coon. Call girl, classy. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! Um, that's the, that's the feeling. That's that's how I feel listening and playing South Park and watching this show. That exact laugh I just did then—the laugh and then oh <laughs> shit! Oh my god! They didn't freaking talk about one of my favorite characters. That's what I'm missing. What? Freaking Professor Chaos. He's, like, the best. I love him so much. I mean, it's, like, we already said that this is a spoiler town. Yeah, he's, Professor- he's mostly uh, an antagonist. You that's don't get to right. Him that much. He's such a brilliant, like, I love how much... You do get to use him a bunch, because as soon as he changes sides, you've got him for the rest of the game. Oh, that's right. He's in the second half. Yeah, or that's not even right. the second half. I would say, like, the, like, one-third of the game, you don't get to play him, and then, like, he suddenly, like, becomes... 
as soon as you go to his lair and you discover why the, the whole Lego blocks he was going to cover the whole town in lava, which that's pretty, I love. That's- the, uh, without the DLC, that's really far into the game. Maybe that's where. Maybe that's why I think that. Yeah, but whatever it is, I just like remember getting eighty percent through the game. Okay. Okay. Well, that actually, you, you're probably completely right about that. But either way, I just loved it so much. I loved his sto- story. Like, I love how he's this like repressed little um, boy that gets like. It's because he's emotionally abused by his parents. That's right. Yeah. 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 And this is his outlet. This yeah. is like it's chaos. This is my favorite character. He. He's oh, uh, like he, I, I'm sorry. I, didn't like I, I have my it. biggest soft spot for him. Yes. Kyle and Stan are my favorite characters, but Butters, yeah. Butters is the one that I sort of love the most. Uh, the thing I... Probably one of my favorite things about him is his relationship with Carmen mm. um, because he's so easily manipulated. Um, and yeah. the fact that, yeah, he has all of this repressed, built-up rage Yeah, yeah. because his... He has no control, and his parents are horrendously abusive mm. emotionally. Um, I think his dad hits him with a belt or something, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's mostly like he doesn't do anything wrong most of the time and gets horrendously overpunished for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually really sad. Like that's the point. Yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. point is to like so. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it, but basically, they didn't even have a name for him until season four. Right. Uh, and then someone said, what should we do with this kid? Like, he's such a punching bag. Like, such a little, sh- like, a turd. Yeah, yeah. And someone turned around. I don't know who it was. But they went, you know what? Let's make him a kid who's emotionally abused by his parents. And, and let's let's do that. Let's, let's show how much a parent can fuck up their child. And he goes through so many horrible things. Death of Eric Carmen. He gets yeah. put through all of this stuff because they think that he's seeing ghosts. Yep. Um, he ends up being chained in his basement. I, is that the same episode? I think it's a different episode. He get, ends up getting chained in his basement and his parents abduct people to feed to him because they think that he's demonized. Yeah, yeah um, I do remember that. Oh, that's- I think that's when he comes back from the dead. Is that Margarine? Shit, I don't know. Margarine, that episode is really insane. So when they fake Butter's death so that he oh, can be Margarine. Margarine. Yeah. <laughs> I also love the, the the dancing one where he's like, uh, I've got something in my front pocket for you. Yeah. <laughs> on, on top of that being really messed up, but also the like fact that he keeps killing people with, yeah, his, with like, dancing. Uh, I love I, I, you dance, sucker, you got nothing on me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, he, he has so many good things. Um, when the, it turns out that the mum finds out that the dad is secretly gay and going to gay. Uh, I don't know this. There you go. Spoilers. Yeah, he goes like, um, I don't know what they're called, but basically these places where people just, you know, get together and anonymously have sex with each other. And, yeah. And I can't remember what it's called. But um, anyway, so the mum decides to kill butters so he doesn't have to deal with it and drives the car into the into the river with him inside Jeez. and they think that he's dead and yeah it's so much shit happens to butters uh but it's what makes him who he is well yeah i mean then we can all i wouldn't say resonate with butters but i think like you were saying before if you're laughing at the punishment of him then you know you might be laughing for the wrong reasons if you're laughing because of how ridiculous his situation is because that's what i find so like amazingly funny about butters is that he's it's what they put him through and what he goes through but it's not the pain he's going through i don't laugh that he's hurting no it's the it's the the ridiculous misunderstanding that's funny yeah that's right the result the result is the sad part yeah uh but i think that's why i love him so much it's it's like i I care about him and he's one of those kids that will probably turn into someone really nasty and horrible when they're a teenager because they and they finally well, at some power. point, yeah, be capable of fighting back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think um, that's why Professor Chaos is so f- perfect because... So good. Because he's incredibly powerful and he's evil and it's and, and that's what it's about, whereas Butters is the polar opposite of that. Mm. Yeah, I've always loved P- Professor Chaos. Professor Chaos! Yeah, I love his, like, 
flawed plans. Yeah. But it's also, like, the beautiful thing is that, like, all villains tend to have flawed plans. Oh, yeah. But he's he's a kid, and that's why his plans are flawed. Like, he's just naive. I think he's... Is his first one Simpsons did it? I think that's his first... I think that's the first Professor Chaos episode. I might be wrong. Uh, and then he comes back in... Um, uh, Oh, uh, good times with weapons. Oh yes, with the yeah, anime. Yeah, 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 that was. Woof, awesome. woof, woof. <laughs> yeah. Woof. Um, oh jeez, poor butters. Yeah, but that was um, uh, yeah. Professor Chaos is amazing, and it's just. I do love Professor Chaos. He's. I love these animations. I love like in the game. I just yeah. love how much power they give him. Even the little things when, like, you use... What's it called? Um, the little special abilities to get past a certain area. Just the way he, like... Yeah. Like, just appears in, and then he's like, Oh, hey! <laughs> you know, like, it's just <laughs> it's just so cute and powerful, and, like... And I guess it's almost, like... Uh, like you were saying, it's... The sad reality would be that, like, he'd probably be a really messed up person in, in the future. Totally. It'd be a horrible, like... Like, if he finally snaps and he finally gets the power, then he'd probably be... Yeah. Yeah, there's there's an episode where... Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called. But basically when... For the school photos, uh, Kenny takes his upside down so his butt is where his face should be. And for Butters, <laughs> Butters' hair just before the flash goes off, a bit of his hair sticks up in the middle. Yeah, and... Right. Nothing happens to Car- uh, to Kenny, except that these people come out of the woodworks who have butt faces and they're looking for their long lost child and they think that he's it. <laughs> That's like it's okay. Nothing. It turns out to be Ben Affleck. Um, <laughs> All right, because <laughs> of his chin. Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, he gets grounded by his parents, um, and they just say. You're grounded, young man. And then he's looking out his window and his his dad comes out and he goes, if I see you doing that face again, you're going to get grounded even further. Stop doing that face. And he's just looking out the window. He's yeah, not even yeah. doing anything. But this is my face, dad. <laughs> so he gets grounded for his face. Oh, poor Butters. Yep. Uh, isn't there like a particular voice actor that does Butters and he's actually kind of oh, like know. Butters? Like he's just a naive and nice kind of guy. Like, I can't remember if I if I imagined that or if that was actually a reality. Uh, that I the... thought it was one of them too. I don't think it's. All right, person. here we go. This is a uh, this is research. This is fact check. Time to research. Yeah, do it. Um, who does the voice of Butters? Matt Stone. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was wrong. <laughs> Um, maybe it was just that they were, they, they knew a guy who like worked with them, who is like totally kind of like Butters in that, in that the way he functions. Um, all right. Uh, I mean, I think, I don't know where, where she go from here? Like, I love the story. Um, I, I, the, the way it ended really kind of bothered me a little bit. It's just kind of like, um, Mitch Connors is an asshole. All right. Let's end that, and they just and that's just like and literally the titles home. pop up, and then you go home, and then you realize they were just kids playing a game, dude. No, I know that. <laughs> that's why I love the nights. The nights. It's like, well, you oh, have the to, night you have to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you don't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Or being on the road. And the doo, 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 doo. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing on the road? <laughs> what are you guys doing on the road? Even the adults so like good. get a, like get kicked off the road when they're when you're fighting on them, and I'm like, that's pretty pretty nice. hilarious. It's a great game. Yeah, I think everyone should play it. I mean, there is... No, I think people who like South Park should play it. <laughs> yeah, you make a really... Uh, I really... Don't. I went into autopilot there and I said that. If I didn't like South Park, I'd throw that game against the wall. I think I wouldn't... I wouldn't, actually. I'd just stop playing. I would have no interest in it. <laughs> yeah. It would... I kind of... It doesn't... It doesn't... Because it doesn't... It doesn't do... It's not an episode, so it's not going, here's the topic we're covering today. Yeah. It's not, we're covering an issue and we're doing stuff. It covers stuff throughout it, but it's really about liking the show. It really is. Um, yeah. And that's why, yeah, for both of the games, I got sort of, you know, it's so funny how these days anything lower than 89% is terrible, apparently. Oh, really? But, yeah, it's like se- they got in the 70s for most things. And that's where it should be. Like, as a game, they're not phenomenal mm. but if you like south park 
they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, and I love South Park. So it was it was getting to hang out with the guys. Like it was getting to hang out with the boys and 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 Wendy, which was awesome. It was yes. So good they brought. Wendy they even made the joke about that at the end of the game. It's like there's something about like maybe it was towards the end when they were like talking about okay cool see you guys later it's like I hope I get to play again not like the first time or something like that. It's like, <laughs> they made reference to the fact that she never got to play the game with them I I do you know what I would have really liked did, did they don't bring that into it do they the the girls no I don't think so not yeah. in the but in the first game I thought they did oh did they I oh, think I'd have they... to look that up because I I kind of wanted that to be in it but yeah yeah. Because it was just so fun. That's one of my margarine is one of my favorite episodes. I really need to I love that. rewatch. I need to rewatch it all, really, and that's what. You- yeah, when when the you know those th- games that yeah yeah the like, kids, yeah. what's your boyfriend gonna be like or how old will you be when you have a kid or whatever yeah yeah it's like blah, 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 blah. and then they the, I'm talking about those paper things that girls made yeah the, yeah. yeah the boys thought that it was real and so they come up with this master plan to get it and it's like when after when butters hands it over to someone everyone that touches it has to, has to go through a naked hose wash to wash <laughs> the toxins off yeah i do remember that actually <laughs> and then they end up blowing it up in the forest uh and kenny's given the explosive and, it's and you can see it from space yeah yeah <laughs> and like afterwards it come and just goes damn ken <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I also uh, say I loved um, microaggression? Microaggression. <laughs> just like, like when someone yeah. says something that's actually like offensive or rude or like. <laughs> just and that's exactly the thing. It's like yeah. they ta- they take the piss out of being PC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. PC principal. He's such a fucking douchebag, and it's so over the top. Treat people like people. Just be a normal person. Don't be. You know, you don't need consent forms to sleep with someone. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is what happens in the show. He, oh, really? Yeah, because he runs a dorm. And he, like, if you sleep with anyone, you have to provide consent forms the next day from the person. It's like, people can actually just be responsible human beings. Well, most people, but yes, consenting. No, all people can. Oh, yeah, <laughs> all people have the ability. Can. Yeah, yeah, can is the key word there. They don't. Some don't. The minority, I hope. Um, yeah, so I really love that, like... And, like, obviously, the, we talked about it before, the Mr. Mackey and... And assessing your gender, yeah, and your gender flu. I thought that was kind of cool. Also, like another thing that was not thrown in your face, just like something you have to do, something you have to get to, and something you have to think about. Well, there's a whole it, yeah, and it stems from that whole arc. There's a there's a trans arc oh, and really? a gender identity arc in one of the seasons that you've missed, which is about. And it's really amazing how it gets raised because it comes from the fact that they make a gender fluid bathroom because Cartman insists that he identify. He realizes he can have his own private bathroom if he d- says he uh, identifi- and identifies as a girl. Yeah, right. And so it's about Wendy's fight to be against this person who is being transphobic by insisting that they're transgender. Yeah. And so she keeps copying shit because she's being seen as transphobic, but she's just trying to stop Cartman. So it's yeah, it's it's very clever and that's where all that gender identity stuff comes from in the in the game is from the fact that it gets raised by Cartman creating this awful scenario uh so that he can get his own toilet. That's freaking amazing. I didn't once again, the, these are the episodes I haven't seen. I feel like that like if people want a really awesome South Park story and they like the story, they should just watch the show. <laughs> and if oh, people look, want to play the play yeah. South Park, they should play the game. But I will tell you that, like... So, I hadn't watched last season. Yep. Because um, I just hadn't b- gotten around to binging it yet when I bought the game. And when the game started and they were talking about Craig and Tweak, I just went, okay, I need to get season 21, what the fuck? And then yep. I watched it and it ties in way more than i expected it's almost like a lead up to it if it, it felt like that it felt like all oh, right it felt like what um x files was supposed to be when the movie came out they had like a whole season that was going there's an x files movie coming so you better be up on x files and then you watch the movie and went uh, i'm not totally sure what this has to do with that season <laughs> i did not are you talking about it recently no the, the original x files movie i didn't i totally didn't watch that it's a fucking great film. Really? Oh, yeah. I watched it again recently and I went, I wonder how bad this actually is. No, it was Quite fucking good. sweet. That show was really totally good. Totally standalone. As well. Yeah, it's a great show. But I just, I don't know if I could ever, 
I, I tried getting back into it recently, but it it's funny because it, so much of it at the start is monster of the week yes. formula. But the problem is there's so many. Uh, anyway, so, someone has a thing online that says how to watch it to make sure that you you can skip as many monster of the week episodes. Right. That you don't want to watch, but without missing the um, underlying uh, smoking man law. Oh, that's right. Because that was the whole. He was like the mystery man that no one knew and yeah, trying to figure out who the yeah. hell he was. Uh, but I haven't watched any of the new stuff. I'm gonna binge it. That's why. But this is supposed to be good. I heard that was a bit of a dud. Uh, uh, my mum actually mentioned it to me. She really liked it, so I used to watch it yeah, with yeah. her. Um, when when I was younger, but I didn't watch the early stuff because. Holy shit, there are some episodes that I watched even now and I went, that's creepy. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so why I don't want to watch I'm it. I'm not surprised that she didn't show it to me when I was a kid. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but that's the kind of thing it reminded me of. It reminded me of them sort of not necessarily going, this is leading up to the game, but it felt like, let's just make sure that we have a whole bunch of, um, of the... Uh, superhero things that are throughout it and let's touch on this issue and this issue and let's bring that back up and then you know the the two boys in a relationship and then you get into the show into the game and you go oh shit it's like a sequel there you go so yeah. watch the seasons first i'm gonna do that in reversal yeah definitely 21 and 22 is what you have to sort of really watch and to really get everything for so season 23 is about to come out and they tease that sorry 20 and 21. 20 and 21. Okay, cool. All right, well, then, everyone, you should totally watch that, but we should uh, also... I felt like this was going to be more about the game, but it turns out to be more about the characters and more about South Park, which is great. I think that's awesome. I think that it's, it's where it has to be. Yeah. It revealed itself. The gameplay itself. is good. The gameplay is good, and you're right. It's just you're playing an episode of South Park, and it's... Yeah. turn-based tactics, a few sort of boss fights in great there. Great music, great animation great music, for, like, animation. what it is. And the super things are never boring to to do. Do over and over like again. The super abilities. Yeah, true. Watching Randy. No, nah, watching Randy. Watching. Um, oh God. Uh, da, 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 Carl's dad. Anyway, watching Carl's dad come in all hopped up on cat uh, gas. P. Yeah, it's not P. It's the um, it's the gas that it's the yeah. It's like, way to get specific about that. Yeah, it's a fluid that male cats spray out when they're threatened or trying like to pheromones. claim the territory. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, just enjoy yeah, the game if you want, or if you already have, enjoy. And crab people. That's also an old one. Anyway, we can talk about this forever. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for doing this podcast, Josh. Peace out. So that's the podcast for today. Stay tuned as there will be a new episode released every single Thursday. And to keep up to date, don't forget to subscribe using Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts. I also want to thank Josh for coming back and sharing his voice yet again. Be ready for some more episodes with him as well. So this podcast was produced and edited by me, Piotr Wasilewski, and the music was sourced from the Filmstro website. Till next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>